Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to add a legend to a plot in base R. In the video I'm going to show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data that we can create with lines 2 to 5 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of R Studio that we have created three new vector objects whereby the first vector object is a group indicator and the second and the third vector objects x and y contain numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to draw these data using the basic installation of the R programming language. Then we can apply the plot function as you can see in line 7 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the bottom right of R Studio that a new plot has been created and in this plot I'm showing a scatter plot with two different groups and the two groups are represented with black and red dots. So I will use this plot as basement for all of the examples in the tutorial. So I'm going to recreate this plot several times. So in the first example of this video, starting at line 9, I'm using exactly the same code to create this plot, just to illustrate that we would have to draw this plot again in case we would not have done that yet. So in line 9 of the code, we can create the plot that you can see at the bottom right. And then if we want to add a legend to this plot with default specifications, then we can apply the legend function as you can see in lines 10 to 13. So within the legend function, I'm first specifying the character string top left. And this specifies that we will show our legend at the top left of our plot. Then I'm specifying the legend argument. And to this argument, I'm specifying a vector of two character strings and each of these character strings will represent one of our groups. So in this case we have two groups, so for that reason I'm assigning a vector with two character strings, group 1 and group 2, to our legend argument. Then I'm specifying the colors that should be shown in our legend, and I'm also specifying the PCH argument to be equal to 16. This is what I have used already before when I created the plot. So for that reason, I'm using the same PCH value in the legend function as well to show the same shape of points in our legend. So if you run lines 10 to 13 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated at the bottom right of our studio because now a legend is shown at the top left. And as you can see, the points have the same colors as in the plot. The shape of the points is the same as in the plot and we have added these text labels group 1 and group 2. So in the following examples of this tutorial, I will show you how to modify this legend. So in the next example of this tutorial, I'm going to move this legend to a different location, and I'm doing that by specifying the character string bottom right instead of top left. So first, in line 15 of the code, I'm going to recreate our plot, as I have already mentioned before, because as basement for the legend function, we always need to recreate our plot. And then I'm applying the legend function exactly the same way as I did before, but this time I'm specifying that the legend should be shown at the bottom right of the plot. So if you run lines 16 to 19 of the code, you can see that our legend is created again. However, this time it is shown at the bottom right of the plot. In the next example of this tutorial, starting at line 21 of the code, I'm going to specify the location of our legend manually. First, we have to recreate our plot in line 21 of the code. And then within the legend function, I'm specifying the x and y coordinates to be equal to minus 2 and 1. So if you run lines 22 to 25 of the code, you can see that our legend is created again. However, this time it is located within the plotting area and not at the borders of the plotting area. In the next example, starting at line 27 of the code, I want to show you how to change the colors of our legend. So in this case, I'm using the box call argument to change the color of the box of our legend to orange and the BG argument to specify the filling color to be equal to green. I'm also using the top left argument as I already did in the first example because I prefer to have my legend at the top left of my plot. So if you run line 27 of the code, our plot is recreated and after running lines 28 to 23, a new legend is added to our plot. 
And as you can see this time, the filling color of the legend is green and the color of the box is orange. So in the previous examples of this tutorial, we have used the default size of our legend. However, in the next example, I want to show you how to increase the size of our legend. First, let's recreate our plot in line 35. And then we can use the CEX argument, as you can see in line 40 of the code. And the larger this value is, the larger is the size of our legend. So in this case, we have specified a relatively large value. So let's see how this looks in our plot. So after running lines 36 to 40 of the code, a legend is created. And as you can see, this legend is very large. So if you would like to decrease the size of our legend, you would have to specify a smaller value here to the CEX argument. In the next example of this video, I want to show you how to change the arrangement of the items within the legend. So first, let's recreate our plot in line 42. And then within the legend function, I'm using the Horace argument. And in this case, I'm specifying this argument to be equal to true. So if you run lines 43 to 47 of the code, you can see that now the items within our legend are aligned horizontally and before they have been aligned vertically. So far in the previous examples, we have used the shape of our legend points to be equal to 16. And we have done that by specifying the PCH argument. However, it is also possible to show a legend with lines. And this is what I want to show you in the next example. So as in the previous examples, we first need to recreate our plot, as you can see in line 49. And then I'm specifying the LTY argument instead of the PCH argument, because the LTY argument is used to specify lines within a legend. And in this case, I'm setting the LTY argument to be equal to one. So if you run lines 50 to 53 of the code, you can see that another legend is created. And this time the symbols within the legends are not points, but lines. It is also possible to specify different line types within a legend. And this is what I want to show you in the last example of this tutorial. So again, let's recreate our plot in line 55 of the code. And then I'm specifying several different values as line types to our legend. So in this case, I'm using the line times with the values one and two. So if you run lines 56 to 59 of the code, you can see that our legend is created again. And this time the first legend item has a straight black line and the second legend item has a dashed red line. So as you have seen in this video, the legend function provides many different alternatives on how to specify a legend. And I recommend to have a look at the help documentation of the legend function because the legend function provides many additional ways on how to specify a legend that I have not shown in this video. However, in case you want to learn more about the legend function in general, I also recommend to have a look at my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.